let's talk about exercise. You know, I, right. people who listen to this podcast know that um, I'm, I'm really passionate about this idea of longevity. Right. We think about longevity through the lens of five sort of modifiable behaviors, yep. exercise, sleep, nutrition, um, emotional health, and all the tools around distress tolerance and then exogenous molecules. Those are the five things that, as far as I can tell, mostly you can manipulate. And Correct. they can b both impact your lifespan and your health span. Um, th four of those are kind of behavioral, right? All right. The, the medications aren't really behavioral in the sense that, you know, compliance is relatively straightforward. The other ones really require a shift in in, in behavior and in, and in mindset. And of these, I, I just Again, maybe we all have our biases and our blind spots, but I just think exercise is in a league of its own in terms of its potential, uh, both on the lifespan axis. So it, you know, its ability to extend life and reduce all cause mortality is well documented. We'll talk about that. Right. Uh, but also on the health span side, it really has no rival. So right. it's for that reason, I think that we spend a lot of time inside our practice focusing on exercise. It, right. it is really the biggest pillar within what we do. Uh, because it has the most impact, and unfortunately or fortunately, it's it's also the most challenging one. I think to uh, to get people to change their um, existing behaviors around because the time commitment is significant. So uh, let's start with some of the basics, just for folks who right. maybe aren't completely up to speed. What what would you say if you're at a party and someone came up to you and said, Mike, I, I understand you're really into this exercise thing. Can you, can you explain to me why it is that exercise helps you live longer? I, I think there's a, a couple of things, Peter, and it's multifactorial. But the, the first thing is that, you know, the risk factors that contribute to cardiovascular disease, all more, cause mortality, are all influenced by exercise and physical activity. These would be blood pressure, diabetes, uh, to some extent, lipids and cholesterol and also how you deal with stress. So I think you get the big three there. There are some other kind of uh, new age or second, second wave risk factors like endothelial function, the lining of the blood vessels uh, the, the, in your body that improve with exercise, the way what's called your autonomic nervous system, and, and people may have heard of vagal tone or heart rate variability. Uh, that's also influenced positively by exercise. So I think there's five or six things, but what's interesting is when you add up each one, you know, a modest in increase in uh, cholesterol, a modest reduction in blood pressure, those sorts of things. When you add them up, you get X, you know, percent improvement in, in, in health uh, span, life expectancy, any metric you want to use. But when you look at the epidemiology, people who do the sorts of things you just mentioned uh, have a, a much bigger benefit than just the, the simple sum of the other risk factors. So there does seem to be some sort of synergy here or some sort of X factor that we don't really uh, understand yet. But yeah. again, yeah, go ahead. No, no, you, you go ahead. I was just going to say this collection of lifestyle related factors, uh, which are, are, are really critical. And again, uh, the autonomic nervous system, blood pressure, uh, lipids, the lining of the blood vessels and, and diabetes would be the big five. Mm -hmm.